Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next uh, Avatar and Korra video. This one is going to be a, a look at my entire Avatar and Korra collection. Now I, I previously did a video on this uh, in late 2016, but I've since had a lot of people asking for like an updated look at my collection and what I've got since then and so on. So that's what I'm going to do in today's video, an updated look at my collection. So we'll start off where we started off the previous collection video and that is with the, I suppose, digital media stuff like DVDs and games. So we have the only Avatar CD ever released uh, and that is Book One Air on CD, the soundtrack for Book One of Korra. And that's the only time we've ever got a soundtrack release. It's probably the, the biggest kind of disappointment in terms of Avatar merchandise uh, ever basically that we haven't got the av Avatar soundtrack or the rest of the Korra soundtrack and it's it's probably, it's such a big problem I think because the the soundtracks of both shows are probably universally the most like loved and there's barely any negativity given towards the soundtracks. So the fact that they're the things that seem like they're never going to be released is just so 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 unfortunate. So uh, next going to games, I really don't have that many. I have the a trilogy of DS games. So we have uh, here The Legend of Aang, the book one game for DS. We have uh, the book two game, which is The Burning Earth. And then we have the book three game, uh, Into the Inferno. This is a very interesting game just because it takes a, a chibi style of telling the book three story. And it's probably the best in terms of like gameplay that we've had up to now. Uh, they take a very different approach than the first two games here and it feels very unique and that's why I think it's, it stands out to me as being probably the, you know, one of the best Avatar games. I do have the Legend of Korra video game but uh, that was never released physically so it's only a digital file of course on my Xbox. Uh, so yeah, let's get into DVDs which is going to be the focus here. So, of course, I do have The Last Airbender on DVD. Uh, you know, what Avatar fan doesn't um, and uh, yeah. I, I have watched it a few times, uh, you guys know that I don't hate that movie, I don't particularly love it either, but it's not something I completely dismiss, uh, so that's why I do have it there to refer to and watch if I ever do need to. So uh, Avatar The Last Airbender on DVD, so here is my original sets, uh, I have the Complete Book 1 set, the Complete Book 2 Earth set, and then the Complete Book 3 Fire set. Uh, these ones are in not the best condition, you can sort of see they're a bit uh, ragged around the edges because I have had them so long. And these are of course UK DVDs, that's why you can see it says there Avatar The Legend of Aang instead of The Last Airbender, but by the time we got the Book 3 release it was The Last Airbender even over here. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm from Ireland so of course I have to get the UK Irish DVDs for the most part uh, to kind of um, watch the stuff. Uh, then later on we got this released which was the the three of those collected together which in part I got because my first sets were um, you know getting pretty kind of damaged and I wanted to have a kind of you know a clean copy just in case and and the I think as well the Amazon listing for this when it was first announced said it was going to be like full screen, it mentioned a couple of things that were like different, but it turned out it really wasn't. It is just the packaging, um, it is just the three sets that I showed off before, but in like standard DVD boxes with this new Avatar State packaging. Um, then I got this, which is the more recent US Avatar The Last Airbender Complete Collection. So this has the kind of new art on the individual DVD sets. Um, so that's this really cool kind of uh, white background art for the characters. I think it's really, really, really nicely done. Um, and the main reason I have this as a US set is because the US DVDs have, have um, much more extras than the UK DVDs. So that's the main reason I have this to just refer to when I need to. And obviously that was prior to them even announcing uh, Avatar on Blu-ray which I do have. I do have Avatar The Last Airbender on Blu-ray. This sort of makes the rest of it redundant, but I'm showing off like my entire collection and you know, you get the idea of like how it keeps like adding up. But we finally got this, which is great. Uh, this was something we were kind of wondering, would it ever happen? 
it and the soundtrack were like the big things that we thought would never happen, but we finally got at least one of them. And we still remain hopeful of at least someday getting uh, the other ones. Uh, as for Legend of Korra, again, I have it kind of multiple times. My initial sets are these, which are the uh, US uh, DVD uh, sets for each of the books. So we have uh, book one, book two, book three, and book four. And the reason I got these was because Korra was weird with regards to how lacking in information the kind of UK release was. It obviously came out much after the um, the uh, the US premiere of Korra and was very behind, very little information. Uh, so that's why I started picking up these, not really knowing that they would do UK DVDs. And then when they announced them, I was kind of far enough into collecting these that I just said, you know, why not just collect both of them, especially if there's going to be differences between the UK uh, and US sets, which was kind of made a little bit more complicated with also there being differences between the DVDs and the Blu-ray sets, and the Blu-ray sets were never released over here, and, and all this stuff. They they did release uh, Korra on Blu-ray. Uh, uh, they did release Korra on DVD in the UK over here. As you can see, it's the exact same thing. It's just the US versions came in a slip case, and also the Book 4 set came with a poster, which I'll show off later on. The UK version didn't come with uh, any of that stuff. Um, other than that, um, the only other kind of difference, if I remember correctly, yeah, is that the, the UK discs have pictures on them, as you can see there. And the uh, US sets are pretty plain uh, in terms of what the DVDs look like, so that's the only uh, real difference there, um, which is completely not important, but especially because, again, the Korra on Blu-ray sort of made that sort of redundant a little bit. This has everything. Um, the the Blu-ray sets for Avatar and Korra are both region-free as far as I'm aware. I, I can play both of these no problem over here without needing to change any settings. So that was a really cool thing, even though there was no like official like Blu-ray release of it over here, that they are available if uh, needed. So yeah, that's all the kind of digital media stuff um, uh, for the moment. And uh, yeah, uh, next up I'll do the books. Okay, so uh, starting with the book section here, this is probably the biggest section overall. Um, in a way, in terms of like the collection, it's probably in a way like the most important, for me at least, part of the collection, because like everyone's gonna have, you know, their copy of the, the, the series on like, whether it be digital or physical copy and stuff like that. Uh, but I think like the books especially, it's, 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 a, it's a really, important, I think, part of the collection. So uh, we'll get to the comics uh, towards the end. Uh, let's cover the other stuff first. So um, the kind of little known uh, two Korra young reader books that came out. So uh, we got Revolution and also um, Endgame. And these two basically together tell this really basic version of book one air. They were originally planning to do more, but then they kind of canceled the book two um, books like this. Uh, they weren't really particularly great, there was no new information in them. Uh, these were very much for young readers. Um, just have a look inside. Very few words on the page um, in that like the Kyoshi novel, even though it's young adult, there's going to be so much more words on page and the writing level is going to be way above what this is. There were a couple of actual errors in this as well, so they never really took off, but you know, they're two of the lesser known pieces of core merchandise for sure. Um, got uh, Avatar Legacy here. So this is going to be the very same type of book as the upcoming uh, Avatar Chronicle book, the kind of Korra book from Inside Editions. Um, and again, the the key thing with this was obviously the kind of like pull out things that came with it. Like you get a, uh, you know, postcard, you know, a flyer for the Jasmine Dragon, you know, that sort of stuff. You get out, the, that, that's what's gonna be also, I think, in the Korra thing. They haven't shown off any of what's inside, but the, it, it could lead to some fun stuff like this. Like there's their own kind of water bending scroll. And it's just fun little things like that in it. Uh, the book itself is uh, a little bit, I suppose, too similar to the information that's revealed in this book, uh, the Avatar The Lost Scrolls collection. And, and, and this is where I'll get across the idea that I'm not really like a completionist necessarily when it comes to my collection in that 
Um, this book is a collected edition of four other books. I don't really mind too much about not having the individual, like, here's the Air Lost Scrolls, here's the Fire Lost Scrolls. I have this one, uh, in the grand scheme of it, it, things, it's not a particularly important book, but it's, it's probably outside the comics, one of the ones maybe people should get, just because it has some information, and Legacy kind of really based a lot of the information it has on what's here. There's only like a handful of pages in Legacy that are really worth getting, but it is a unique book because of those kind of pull-out sections in it as well. So uh, from there, let's go into uh, these two books. So we have the Avatar The Last Airbender uh, coloring book that was released by Dark Horse Comics, which is pretty cool, as you can see there. Again, I, I think I colored in one of these pages. Uh, at least a little bit, anyway. I, I, did, I didn't do it very well. Uh, as you can see, I'm not really an artist, but I did a little bit um, there. Uh, again, I got, I got this just because I think some of the art is very nice in terms of its representation of, you know, how it did stuff. There was also the Legend of Korra coloring book that was released as well. And again, similarly, you have the same kind of idea for the characters. Some really nice art in here. And they're just kind of cool books to have because the, co the color, the cover looks really cool on both of these books. Um, just to get across the whole coloring book thing. So there's those two. There's the How to Draw Legend of Korra book. Um, and again, like I think there was Avatar books like this. I got this one just because, you know, it, when it was announced, you know, I kind of covered the news and so on. But, you know, there's not too much to say. I think what, if you look at my review for this, you can see some of my drawings. But, you know, it's, it's actually fairly, fairly good instructions and so on. Like, it really does start from basics and then kind of adds on to it and so on. So it's a, it's a, it's a fairly cool book. Uh, then we get into these really big books here. Um, let me try to showcase these on camera. So we've got the uh, Avatar The Last Airbender poster collection. I've kept mine together. I actually haven't put any of them up on my wall or anything like that. I've kept the book, you know, pretty much as is. But uh, yeah, really, really nice to have these. These are such kind of cool books to have. And then if you want posters, this is probably the easy way, easiest way to get them. There we go. Uh, Cora poster collection. Absolutely love this piece of art here for the cover. And again, inside, you know, that was a bit random that I opened up the cover there. But uh, you, you see, that, that's what they do. So yeah, th th those books are pretty cool. Uh, they're, they're, they're those sort of books that you almost forget came out. Um, over the years because you're so focused on like the comics that you forget that these are things that kind of happened as well so uh getting into the comics here i'll get into the big books uh the big dark horse books in a second i have to bring them in because they're so you know heavy and there's so many of them at this point uh, so let's start with the smaller books so in terms of uh, individual issues and um, the only individual issues of avatar comics that have been released are the free comic book day books uh I have attended Free Comic Book Day, you know, pretty much every year since the Avatar comics started, you know, doing stuff at it. I've only been able to get two of them myself, and I haven't really bothered to um, try and pick them up kind of uh, on eBay or anything like that. But the two that I have are Shells, the Sokka and Suki story, and then I think uh, probably my favorite free comic overall, um, this one here with uh, Korra and Naga. Uh, their story, Friends for Life. Um, now, with the Avatar books specifically, we know that uh, they're all getting collected in Team Avatar Tales, Team Avatar Tales, which is coming out uh, in like October, I think, at this point. Um, so I'll have a physical copy of like Rebound and Sisters and all that sort of stuff uh, before the year is out. So that's uh, good. And then there is another uh, Legend of Korra free comic, but um, it's called Lost Pets. It's not a particularly important story, but I assume they will do some sort of a Korra comic collection. And that, th that plus uh, Friends for Life will probably be included in it as well. So, uh, yeah, other than that, it's just going through uh, the big stack of Avatar comics that we have at this point. So, it's even tricky just to hold all of the, you know, smaller books all together. But uh, there's everything we have up to now. Obviously, starting with The Lost Adventures, going through The Promise and The, and the Search, The Rift, uh, Smoke and Shadow, uh, North and South. The first part of Imbalance is out as of the recording of this video, and then we have all of Turf Wars as well. So, um, 
I don't know if I need to go through all of this, but I suppose I'll just really quickly go through the covers. So there's uh, The Lost Adventures. Again, sort of a forgotten book. I think it's important that everyone kind of remembers that this book actually exists, uh, especially with Team Avatar Tales coming out kind of soon-ish. We have the three parts of uh, The Promise, which again, I, I think is a pretty underappreciated book. I think it's an excellent, excellent book and everyone should check it out and not just skip to the search because I know the search I consider it to be the best Avatar comic as well but um, I think the promise does get underappreciated so there's the three parts of the search which is a very important story um, there's the rift which is really good as well uh, another series I really really do like and um, so there's the three parts of that then we have smoke and shadow a book we should be referencing a lot, I suppose, in the coming years as we get back to the Fire Nation story, back to the Azula story. A lot of stuff will basically be continuing plots from this series, so that's an important one going forward. The three parts of North and South as well. We have here. We have only one part of Imbalance out at this point. Uh, Imbalance Part 2 is out next month as is uh, the first part of Runes of the Empire. Uh, and then of course we have the three parts of Legend of Korra Turf Wars, the first Korra comic as well. So that's that. And then uh, give me a second here while I get in the, uh, the big Dark Horse books now. Okay, so <laughs> here are the big Dark Horse books. Um, it's incredibly difficult to hold them all. Um, so let's quickly go through them. So we have the Promise Library Edition, which is the collected edition for the Promise. We have Search Library Edition. The Rift Library Edition. Smoke and Shadow Library Edition. North and South Library Edition. Turf Wars Library Edition, newly released. Um, what do we have here then next? Uh, these are in backwards order. Uh, so, yeah. Avatar Last Airbender art book. Legend of Korra, book one air art book. Book two spirits art book. Book three change art book. And the book four balance. Sorry, I have these in weird order actually. I said that completely wrong, didn't I? Yeah, but I don't know why I had them mixed up like that. So, this is the book for Balance art book, uh, this is the book two Spirits art book, and book three, this was book one. It was a weird order I had them in. Um, but anyway, lots of big books here, very difficult to mess around with them on camera, but uh, that is, I believe, all of the books. I thought I'd do a, a separate section here on the Avatar trading card game since it's uh, I suppose in a way become a little bit of a speciality of mine in that like a lot of the videos out there about the trading card game are kind of videos I've put out about it so uh, what do I actually have in terms of like cards physical cards so I have um, two of the uh, starter sets as you can see here uh, and you can see sort of the difference here as well like one says Legend of Aang uh, one says Last Airbender giving you an idea of like one's uh, UK print one's an American print and so on uh, and then uh, I suppose over the years I've probably opened up about 20 to 30 packs. Uh, I can't keep great track of that because I don't have like a huge, huge collection. But I have a, this binder which features uh, I think most of the cards that I have in terms of like in order basically. And um, it, it's, it's pretty good in terms of like how kind of complete I actually am on it. Um, Obviously there's a couple of sections where like it is, I'm just like missing a bunch of cards. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, like it, it's it's probably a, a bigger collection than a lot of people have when it comes to the uh, Avatar trading cards. 
Uh, but I think the main thing to get to here is probably like, you know, th you know this page which covers some of the character cards more specifically um, are pretty nice. And then when you actually get into the uh, the chamber cards uh, and, the, and the hollows as well, um, I have three of the hollows as you can see here. So I have the uh, Iro one, the um, Zhao one, and also the Kinto uh, one. And then you can sort of see here that the chamber cards, you know, I have five different Angs, um, cause I think there was six individual like combinations of like back and fronts of the cards for some of these ones, which was interesting. You know, you can see here, uh, two Kataras, two different Boomies. Um, I have a Malu there, who's one of the newer characters for the game. Um, there's Prince Zuko. Iroh and Afiko. There's Kinto. So yeah, fairly cool overall. Uh, you know, I, not, not too much to say about it. I'll, I just refer you to some of the other videos I have on my channel. If you're unfamiliar with the Avatar trading card game, uh, I have videos covering the flavor text, the lore that's basically presented from the trading card game. There is some new stuff in it. Uh, and I think I have much earlier videos from, on my channel about like how the game actually works in terms of playing it. They're much older, so they're probably not as good, but um, you know, it, it's an oldish game. Like no one's really gonna be playing it anymore. Um, though I will say the game itself actually was fairly interesting. Um, you know, it, it's sort of a, a trading card game system rather than really being like, rather than the card game being specifically meant to sort of represent Avatar in some way, it was more just Avatar placed onto the Quick Strike system, which they covered for other franchises like Pirates of the Caribbean and so on. So like, I, I think there was a way where you could actually have it be like, okay, I'm playing Avatar, I'm gonna play against your Pirates of the Caribbean deck and I'll play against your like, what DC or Marvel, I think got a Quick Strike set at some point. I, think I may be wrong on that but that that's the whole idea of it anyway uh, and again like with this it's another one where like starter decks you can get you can get one of these fairly easily uh, without too much problem and without having to spend too much um, these are actually f still these starter sets are still fairly available it is a two-player starter set as well and uh, as far as I'm aware as well these are sort of randomized, so you can actually get hollows in these sets. It isn't like you maybe would think, and it's like this set card list like most trading card games. I'm pretty sure it is more or less this kind of random or like seeded collection of cards. So like they do it in a way where you can you can play, like they give you enough cards to play and they give you... And the, the, you get a certain amount of cards so that like it's not that your deck is just utterly imbalanced. You got 60 utterly random cards. But it was in a way where like you could get rares and, and hollows in it as if, if you really you know, were good. But um, uh, again, it's some of the information on the card game, especially some stuff like that, pull ratios and stuff like that, isn't great. I'm always on the lookout to see can I find like packs for cheap. Uh, it's 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 sort of difficult, you know. They, they come up here and there, but it's it is fairly rare at this point. But um, I I wouldn't say it's a case where it's just like. It's rare, but also really expensive. Most of the time when you see listings go up, it's still at a somewhat reasonable price. Um, it's just, it is fairly rare to find some of the stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll move on to some other stuff in my collection. Okay, so uh, next here, uh, I'm gonna cover like uh, figures, toys, that sort of thing. So uh, in terms of the original Avatar toy line, uh, I don't actually have too many. Um, I have uh, Roku, the individual, Roku figure. I also have this uh, Ice Attack Ang, which uh, you know it gives you an idea of what the toy line was actually like. It was just it's just the male characters constantly done in like different outfits. No female characters. They're pretty good action figures. Even even now, I think considering how old they are, they still sort of stand out as being like fairly good quality, which I, I will say about it. Uh, it just probably ended too soon. They maybe went in too hard too early on it. Uh, and especially because they did do really cool stuff, like uh, here's a Fang, Spirit Fang, the dragon, um, and it does some pretty cool little things, you know, that it does, uh, the articulated wings and so on. It's it's pretty interesting, uh, Komodo Rhino, 
you know, they, they, they went all in on this, which is, is cool. Again, it's just a kind of rare toy line at this point. It's kind of difficult to find any of that stuff uh, nowadays, basically. Uh, what else do I have here? Moving away from that into more modern stuff, uh, here is the Zwire Industries Chibi Ang figure with Momo, of course. And uh, that's something else I have. Uh, one of the other things, really cool, uh, Nendoroid Korra. Uh, very nice to see. I, I really wish they do more of these Nendoroids. They're a little bit expensive, of course, but uh, I really would like to see more of them. So, really cool part of my collection. And then the rest of this is just the pop vinyls, which I've covered fairly recently on my channel, but I'll quickly go through them uh, here for you. Um, so, we've got the standard Ang, who came, of course, with Momo. Um, we've got Katara, we've got Sokka, we've got Zuko, Iroh, Toph, those are all the, uh, the seven standard ones. Um, then we've got the exclusives, which are GameStop exclusive Azula and the Hot Topic exclusive um, Ang on Air Scooter. I think I forgot to show off Appa as well. He's one of the standard ones, uh, Appa. Um, so yeah, that's all of the molds. You know, there, there's an exclusive Zuko that's like, uh, it's the same figure, it's just he's doing a fire dagger pose instead of this fire blast pose. Uh, and then there is a glow-in-the-dark version of this Ang on Air Scooter, which is meant to be a kind of, uh, you know, Avatar State type uh, pose that's, that's going on there. Uh, I definitely hope they do more Funko Pops, just, just so we can add to the, you know, action figure kind of collecting side of things. Uh, like, there's other stuff, of course, that I know I don't have in my collection. Again, I'm not really a, a completionist on a lot of this stuff, like the big, expensive Korosami statue that came out a while ago. There was a Zwire Industry did a bigger Lin statue, they did a bigger Korra statue, uh, and it's just, uh, they did a bigger Aang statue actually as well. Uh, that's where I'm not as interested in the like, just the really kind of big, like I think overly expensive stuff. I am more interested in the kind of small, sh kind of cheaper stuff, but if there is something big that I'm actually truly interested in, I'll probably do my best to try and get it. And that's just kind of where I am with this sort of stuff. Like, I really wish they had done like an actual action figure line for Korra. I think it would have worked really well, but uh, it just uh, never happened. So that's uh, really unfortunate. Um, but uh, we'll move on from action figures into uh, pretty much just anything else uh, that's uh, left to cover in my collection. It's kind of more random scattered after this. Uh, okay, so first up I'm going to tackle some of the uh, Zen Monkey Studios pins that I have. So I have the original Ang that they released. Uh, that's one of their first pins. Uh, more recently they released a Katara that was really, really nice. Day of Black Sun Katara, as you can see there. Uh, here is Sokka with the boomerang background, which is very, very nice. I think Suki is one of the best pins that they've done. Really, really nice looking pin for Suki. Here is uh, the Zuko that I have. Here is Toph. Very cool. Here's Iroh with T, which again is one of the first ones that they did release. Um, I have uh, Roku. And then last one that I have is Appa. And I, th I think Zen Monkey Studios pins is like a good example again of like why I'm not like a full completionist in that. I think yes, the fact that it's kind of having to ship from, from the US uh, kind of limits in how many I can buy at a time. But also, uh, I, I don't feel they've made some of the best choices with characters, with designs of pins. So, you know, I don't get every pin just because it's a new avatar piece of merchandise. I do, I am very selective with stuff like that, where it's, you know, it's, it's collectible, it's kind of cheap enough, but I don't want to go like full all in on it. And that the Korra pins are a good example of like, I haven't been particularly happy with a lot of the Korra pins that they've put out. So that's why I haven't really committed to buying any of them. Uh, and I'll wait until they do release some ones that I'm interested in before I, I pick them up. Um, obviously that might change if they become more readily available over here, um, but uh, right now that's the, the situation. 
Uh, last, I suppose, big thing before I get into like posters and just kind of really, really smaller stuff like that I have is uh, fairly new to my collection, uh, Legend of Korra Pro Bending Arena Game from IDW Games. Uh, I have a review of this on my channel if you want to see how the game works and plays and so on. I went pretty in depth on it. This is like this is like the deluxe edition, so it comes with a ton of stuff. Uh, this is the one that comes with like most of the extra teams. Um, it's pretty much everything that's not the Amon expansion to the game, uh, in that like it has Kuvira, Unalak, and so on, uh, Pali, um, like Buzzard Wasps, that sort of thing in it. It's um. It's a game I actually would really recommend people check out. If, you, if you're into these sort of board game tabletop type type games, there's actually a ton of depth, especially this kind of deluxe edition, which they sent me to review. That's why I have it. Um, there's so much going on in here. I, I think the game, which is just a, if you, the standard version of which I think is more readily available, is the Fire Ferrets versus the Wolf Bats. There's even depth there just between those two teams because they give you enough cards to mix stuff around as well. Uh, it's it's really, really nice. And, and I suppose you can sort of include some of this as being like uh, figures if I can quickly find some of this stuff. This does come with actually something that's fairly cool here, which is just the, the, the poster for, you know, the pro bending finals is, is actually pretty nice to get. Plus some of this stuff on the inside actually makes for some nice uh, kind of uh, kind of material to get, just like police bending card, there's the Rabaroos, uh, there's Unalox card, Kuvira, there's the fire ferrets, and there's a lot of nice little details on there, like the symbols are on the back. If you kind of go through it, uh, buzzard wasps. So, so I think that they put some a lot of nice effort into this to really make it work. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know if I can show this too well. I'll just kind of get the camera then to show. So, um, yeah, you can see there what you sort of get inside. And then all these little figures, which are really, really nice. Um, again, I wish they were like painted somehow. I get why it's probably a bit much to ask for all of these to be individually painted, but just something to make them stand out a little bit more. But there, there are really nicely detailed when you go into it. And just this in general is packaged really, really nicely. So yeah, that's the uh, Pro Bending Arena game. And then the last thing I need to do to show you guys is just, like I said, posters. Uh, again, there's, there's nothing new since the last video, but I will show it off again uh, if this is your first time kind of going through the collection here. So I'll just close up this stuff and uh, yeah, I'll take you over to where I have my posters here. Okay, so, so just to get this across a little bit more, uh, this is the uh, Book Two Spirits uh, art book. And you can see towards the end of it, there's this kind of section on sort of ancillary art. And you can see here that these sketches, and it's mentioned here at the bottom by Joaquin de Santos, these coordination sketch rewards are always fun to do for the fans. And you can see that the, the, there's this Mako one up here. You know, signed by Joaquin de Santos, 2013 and so on, and all these other ones. I was one of the people who topped uh, the coronation kind of standings by the end of it, so I actually won one of these uh, sketches, specifically that Mako one. So I'll just take you over to it now. Okay, so here's sort of where I have my posters. Um, you can see across here, this is where we have it. So this one here is the Book 4 Balance US DVD poster. That's the free one you get with the DVD and also the Blu-ray for Book 4. Uh, this is the standard Coronation poster, so I think a good amount of people got this one. I think they gave it out other places, not just for people who um, did well in Coronation. So this one is it's sort of exclusive, but not overly exclusive. This one, uh, again, is a kind of Coronation reward. You can see here it's uh, signed by uh, Mike and Brian from 2012. And it's this really, really nice uh, Josh Middleton, I think, piece of art. It's in the core poster collection as well. Um, but obviously that came out way after the actual poster itself. Um, so that's, that's really cool to have. It's much more exclusive. And then here we go. Probably the, the most, probably the most important thing I have in my collection in terms of it being properly exclusive is this uh, 
you know, one of a kind sketch by Joaquim de Santos, which obviously I showed you, is in the art book, it's referenced there. And you can see right there at the bottom, I framed it myself, so you can see there, JDS 2013. And I don't know if you can quite see the details there, but you can see it's 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 not just like a scan of it or anything like that. This is the actual piece of art in that like you can you can see the kind of coloring mar kind of marks kind of and even the subtle little like mistakes that make it clear that like yeah, he drew this. So it's uh, really really cool to have and like as someone who likes Mako as a character, uh, you know, it, it was it was really cool to get him as well, one of the main characters. So, you know, definitely the, the kind of pride of my collection is this kind of one-of-a-kind sketch in that it's, it's interesting just to have something that no one else out there has. Uh, and kind of, in a way, to have, like, proof of it as well from the art book that it was me. Because I think they've since taken down the, uh, the site that has the, um, the winner listings for coronation so I, I don't think I'm listed on there anymore but I I can't remember where I came I think I might have come seventh or something like that so I think you have to be within the top 10 to win one of these sketches and I, I did place fairly high so that was very very cool to see so I think that's most of my collection so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that kind of look through my collection. I have a, a few other, I suppose, smaller things. They're not really official or anything like that. Like I have a wall scroll just up there. I think I showed that off in the other video. I think downstairs in like one of the presses, there's like a a mug that we got made in some site that has a picture of Appa on it. Like it, again, it's, it's sort of like just something we made ourselves. Um, but like it's, you know, little other pieces of that. I, I stuck to just the official merchandise for this uh, video here, but um, that's what I kind of wanted to talk about. And yeah, like, of course, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be continuing to add to that as the year progresses. And that obviously uh, the comics are something that's going to be added on to and that the, the rest of Imbalance Part 2 and Part 3 are going to be out before the end of the year. Uh, Runes of the Empire Part 1 and 2 are going to be out this year. Uh, they'll probably announce the Imbalance Hardcover Library Edition, there's that to come out, the hardcover collection for Runes of the Empire, the first proper Avatar novel, the Kyoshi novel is going to be coming out, and that's something I'll definitely be adding to the collection. You know, I'll probably get more Zen Monkey Studio pins as they announce them and so on. There's those Inside Editions books coming out, the one about Korra, and then the one about the Fire Nation that seems to have some information on Iroh, uh, that I'll be adding. Um, and they're also releasing some like notebook type stuff, which I probably will pick up at least some of them. So there's other merchandise coming out and you know, the, the collection will just continue to kind of uh, grow from here on out in that uh, I think just as like final thoughts on it, like I, I'm, I'm happy with the, the stuff I have, but in the grand scheme of things, it's all sort of mass market stuff. It's really only the Mako sketch and maybe some of those exclusive coronation posters that I think make the, my collection sort of stand out a little bit. Everything else is just, oh yeah, I just happen to be have like a complete set of like most of the Dark Horse books and so on. Um, but again, that that's all you can really do in some cases, uh, you know, being a collector here and that like, I can't attend most of these conventions where they give out like those exclusive posters and stuff like that. And uh, in those sort of situations, I don't really have too much of a desire to even like try and like purchase them secondhand or anything like that. So. Um, yeah, that, that's my, my thoughts on the collection. We'll probably do another one of these in a couple of years, um, or whenever there's some sort of a big thing that happens. But yeah, like I assume we'll get more Funko Pops and all that sort of stuff uh, announced as we go on. But uh, yeah, in the, in the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on my collection. Let me know what stuff you have in your collection that's maybe different or stuff that you didn't know there was out there to get and so on. But uh, yeah, that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.